Hello everyone and welcome again to Concerts from the Minor Core. My name is Dr. Mark Haig. Uh, I've been informed this is our 11th one so far since the pandemic uh, shut down. Um, Minor Core has been in existence since 1848 here in Columbus. It's the oldest extant uh, social and singing uh, German group in North America. Uh, and it's only been shut down one time before, which was in the 1850s when there was a pretty serious cholera outbreak in Columbus. Um, I don't know how long it was, but otherwise, during times of war, famine, depression, everything else, we've always got together. But this virus uh, is uh, pretty serious, so we decided to take it seriously, and we've been out of commission since uh, at least sometime in March, I think, maybe even February. Anyway, uh, I'm glad you're here, and I hope that you enjoyed today's concert. I'm actually doing a two-part uh, presentation. This is part one today. I'm calling it Innovation in Small Packages. And I'm going to contrast uh, a set of bagatelles of Ludwig van Beethoven, the Opus 33, with the um, Moma Musico of Franz Schubert. And, um, I'll talk just a little bit about it. I, let's talk about Beethoven today because this is, this is the music we're going to focus on today. The year is 1802. Beethoven's about 32 years old now. His birthday is at the end of the year. It's December 16th. But he's established himself as a very serious concert performer previously, an improviser unparalleled, and a composer. And of course, from this time on to the end of his life, uh, in 1827, he has a unique position in the world, and certainly in the European world. Um, there is nobody like him, and everybody knows who Beethoven is. I mean, there were kings and generals and great leaders and great things happened, and then there was Beethoven. And even composers thereafter kind of shook in there, they quaked in their boots when they tried to, you know, come out of Beethoven's shadow. I remember my piano teacher years ago, Dr. Walters, said that Brahms was at least around 40 years old before he actually ventured to publish his first symphony because he had that shadow of Beethoven hanging over him and wasn't sure he was worthy of it. Brahms was very self-critical, but turned out to be a fabulous composer. Anyway, with Beethoven, this is 1802. Napoleon has been on the move. He's returned to France and he's now the first consul hasn't declared himself emperor yet, but he's quite close to it. And uh, Beethoven was a great supporter of uh, new things. Uh, he was a, in an interesting time. This is the latter part of the 18th century. The Enlightenment, um, humanism, and so many things. The, finally, humanity's relatively successful break away from the uh, tight-fisted reign of the church for so many centuries and people are striving to do a lot of big things. I would say it's even kind of the age of heroism with, uh, with Napoleon doing things. And, and really, the Americans had won their freedom, and um, Beethoven was aware of that, paid attention to that. He was a Republican at heart. I don't mean that in terms of modern political parties. I mean the idea of a representative government that truly represented ordinary people. And despite the fact that he was paid for by incredibly wealthy aristocratic folks, who kept him going because they admired his genius. And they tolerated the other stuff because his genius and his music was so fabulous. But, um, uh, you know, he, what, what I wanted to say about these pieces, let's get a little bit more specific about them. The, a bagatelle is, um, a, one meaning is just kind of a, a, little, a little thing, just kind of a, a silly little thing that doesn't have much meaning to it. And it's interesting that he applied that meaning because when you hear these pieces, you can hear how well-crafted they are and how much of a mind there is working in these pieces. So Beethoven has always wanted to be kind of tongue-in-cheek and humorous about things. I think uh, one of the things I want you to perhaps pay attention to with the Beethoven this week, Schubert next week, is how the character and the personality comes out in the man into the music. And with Beethoven, I find as you listen to these pieces, very clearly crafty working mind who really 
loves to tinker and fix and play with things, but he does it in a kind of a humorous way. Beethoven's humor is uh, kind of interesting to me. I mean, people have written essays and articles and things in books about everything to do with Beethoven, including his sense of humor. And I, I would say, I find him to be the kind of guy who would, who probably loved puns and loved um, double entendre jokes. Um, and then would see if you actually got it or not. He's, and and you, you push it to see if you really understood it. And then sometimes he's almost maniacal and just pounding his way through a 5151515555551 cadence to the end, which seems almost ludicrous. And I think there's some victoriousness about it, but I think he's, it's a somewhat self-deprecating humor that he's losing, using. Um, what I would say about these pieces in general, um, there, uh, in Beethoven's earlier sonatas, um, there was either a scherzo or a minuet. Usually, they were the earlier ones were four movement uh, works, and the minuet and the, and the uh, I, I should say the minuet, and then eventually that also became was called a scherzo. The minuet was an old dance, which actually goes back into the Baroque period, but which was really highly refined in the classical period, and what I would say in terms of form, because that's what's important about these pieces is the structure, is what's called ABA form. So there's some kind of introduced idea, melody, thematic material, there's something contrasting that, and then you come back to the original. When you're in the hands of a composer like Beethoven, when you get back to the original, it's not just simply necessarily a repeat of the original information, it's modified, it's um, um, ornamented. Um, he was an incredible improviser, and you'll hear that in this first piece. I'm also playing them in a way for, for people who know about performance practice, people who pay attention to every little tiny detail and little piece of, you know, flake of skin and have anything to do with Beethoven. Um, there's a question about the ornaments uh, and how they were realized in the later 18th century. And uh, I'm choosing to go a little old-fashioned, so I'm playing my turns from the upper note intentionally, because the first people, the first uh, piece, for example, is uh, in six-eight time, but it feels to me like it's a minuet. That's what's laying underneath the thing in terms of the, the feeling, the dance. Beethoven is demonstrating his ability to ornament and improvise. Themes and variations were a huge thing that he was famous for. And so every time that the theme comes back, it becomes a little bit more ridiculously ornamented. But what I feel about the pieces that underneath, it reminds me of a piece that was written about a century later by the Russian composer Sergei Prokofiev, which um, is called The Grandmother's Minuet. And it's a rather charming piece that kind of, you know, a little bit like a Bugs Bunny cartoon kind of... I don't mean to say anything bad about old people. I'm old people myself, but uh, kind of grandma sitting in the chair knitting and rocking back and forth kind of thing. And you get this kind of quaint feeling about the, this first piece as it opens. And uh, in the middle of uh, rocking and everything, grandma just has this smile on her face. And I don't know if it's the cat chasing a mouse around the room or something, but all this kind of activity goes on. All these different things this kind of momentary virtuosity and then it just returns to grandma in her rocking chair you know I find it the, the, you'll see the humor you'll see the cleverness you'll see the the, the development of the material really what's uh, wonderful about these pieces and what's special about them they're rather short but very involved and what they're working with is kind of the idea of introducing one um, theme or one idea, not really developing it in the sense of, of a sonata form, but just uh, doing something creative in the moment, relatively brief with it. But there's a statement there. These short pieces coming out of Beethoven and Schubert evolved into what became known as the Charakterstück, or the character piece of the 19th century, which really began to take over most of what um, music was outside of classical forms like sonatas or concertos, that the shorter forms actually became much more 
important uh, contribution to the repertoire. Sometimes evolving quite a bit, not so short, but definitely not sonatas. And so Beethoven is kind of setting the stage with these kinds of creations. The other thing I would say, well, one more thing about Beethoven. Uh, you'll find in the writings about all of his music and everything that some of his uh, newest announcements in terms of his ideas about music, form, and so forth, uh, key relationships, harmonies moving out into pretty extraordinary directions, happened in his string quartets. Um, and I, find, I found very early on when I was learning Beethoven in the early sonatas, or if I played the very first one, the, the minuet in there, uh, it, it, you can clearly see that it's written for three or four voices. Uh, and it's written in such a way that you can imagine a string quartet, you know, playing against and with each other and bringing these voices out and so forth. And I think that it's interesting that in these pieces, while they're clearly um, pianistic in some ways, there are other ones which it seems to me could be easily rewritten for a string quartet. And really that seems to be what's in his mind. Um, when he's fabricating these wonderful little, tiny little stories, uh, the way they're articulated. Um, and I think that in terms of performance practices and such, for example, with the second one, a pianist, I, I, I was taught some of these when I was younger. And I remember there's a da da bum da 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 dum bum bum bum. That's a pianistic thing. Da 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 dum bum bum bum. But I can see where the strings could just and leaving it hanging that way. Where because of the percussive nature of our piano, we want to make it sing, we want to push it forward. So I think I'm trying to take the string quartet idea of these. And I would uh, like to take the moment to uh, thank my mentor. Norman Palu, who was the first violinist of the Priority Quartet in Madison, Wisconsin for 29 years. And I'm thinking about the Priority Quartet when I'm playing some of these works, remembering um, Martha and Richard Bloom, who were a, a husband and wife. Uh, she was the second violin and he was the viola. And then Perry Karp, this very physical, big Russian Jewish bear of a man uh, who sometimes really got into the cello in such a great big way. Um, not suggesting that I'm playing any of this as well as they ever did. Their Beethoven performances were astonishing. But I'm thinking about them and I, in a sense, like to dedicate these performances of Beethoven to Norman, Norman Paolo, and my memory of those particular members of when he was the first violinist of the Priority Quartet. So I hope you enjoy these today. It's not, the music's not too long, probably won't take any more than all this talking did. <laughs> But um, I hope you enjoy it, and then I'll see you next week for Schubert. Thank you very much.